The major thing that's wrong with the deal, and the deal was undemocratically enacted in the United States by a president who was in a minority. The Senate doesn't support the deal. The House doesn't support the deal. The American people don't support the deal. I don't believe the Iranian people support the deal. Certainly the people who have freedom to express themselves don't support the deal. But the president got the deal through by using a discredited maneuver called the filibuster, which prevented real debate and a real vote. Now, why did he do that? I think he did that because he realizes that what the United States is doing today amounts essentially to a crime. What is that crime? That crime, and you're all familiar with it, because we have all been accused of committing that crime, falsely, but that crime is providing material support to terrorism. And what does this deal do? It provides tens of billions, perhaps hundreds of billions of dollars of material support for terrorism. Of every dollar that the Iranians will get, much of it will go to repressing dissent within Iran, the rest of it will go to encouraging terrorism around the Middle East and ultimately around the world. That is why the President of the United States and the Secretary of Defense and their... Hello, Professor Dershowitz. Thank you for all your service and your great talk today. My question is, aren't the Republicans as complicit as Obama in passing the Iranian deal because they, in effect, passed the Corker Amendment, which was really a fast-track uh, Iranian deal? I think it was a terrible mistake for the Corker Amendment to be passed. I think the Republicans were tricked into doing it. I don't think they thought through the implications of how this would allow the President to get the deal through with a majority against them in both the House and the Senate, and a majority against them among the American people. There's enough balls to go around here. The big victims, though, are the American people, the people of Israel, the people of the Middle East, and people in the world who want to see Iran without a nuclear war. God bless you. Thank you, Thank Professor. You. Many, many times in this plaza, I've spoken on behalf of the oppressed of the former Soviet Union. I've spoken on behalf of human rights in China. I've spoken on behalf of human rights all over the world. And today it is my great honor to speak out on behalf of human rights for the wonderful people of Iran who are now oppressed by the terrible leaders of Iran. Now, we are today in an appropriately named plaza, named after the great advocate of human rights, Dag Hammarskjöld. As many of you know, Dag Hammarskjöld died, perhaps was assassinated, in the effort to try to bring human rights to the world and to try to keep the United Nations as a beacon of justice and human rights. Tragically, since his death, the United Nations has turned away from that mission and has become a podium and a lectern for the most oppressive and the most reactionary forces. Today, one of the most repressive people speaks from that podium and that is the propaganda president of Iran, Rouhani. I say the propaganda president because who is he and what is he? He is a smiling face of a puppet, and the strings are being pulled by the tyrannical leadership of the Ayatollah Khamenei. Let us understand where power resides in the current regime in Iran. It does not reside with the people as it does in a democracy. It does not reside with women who are oppressed. It does not reside with people who believe in true Islam and in the peaceful nature of Islam. It resides in a group of tyrants, revolutionary tyrants they claim to be, but reactionary climates they actually are. Let's look at Rahane's record. Since coming to power, he has presided over the brutal execution of more innocent people than even 
Ahmadinejad presided over. Everybody in the world recognized the evil of Ahmadinejad because he at least was totally honest in the way he presented himself. He presented himself as a bigot, as a Holocaust denier, as a defender of repression, as a hater of the United States, as a hater of all things decent. And he was replaced for that reason by the smiling face of a propaganda expert who actually presents a moderate image to the world, but it's a false moderate image. And we're here today to expose that falsehood. I wish we could have here today as witnesses to the repressive nature of the regime, the hundreds of thousands of people who have been murdered in cold blood in the name of a reactionary and repressive philosophy. I wish we could have here today the wonderful Iranian people who have a different sexual orientation, who are hanged because of their sexual orientation. I wish we could have here today as witnesses the Baha'is who were murdered, the other Muslims who were murdered, the Christians who were murdered, the Jews who were murdered. They would be great witnesses, but the one thing that the Ahmadinejad, Rouhani, uh, Khomeini, Khomeini regime specializes in is killing witnesses. They are obstructing justice, because if you are a witness to injustice, you will be imprisoned and you will be executed and you will be silenced because the last thing this regime wants is truth. Truth is the enemy of repression. The truth will make you free and we're here today to express that truth. Now, in addition to everything that the regime has currently done to repress, I'm here today to protest against the deal that was recently struck between the United States, the P plus five, and the Iranian regime. What does that deal do? What that deal does is it gives the repressive regime in Iran hundreds of billions of dollars to increase their repression. You know, there are those who say, and there are some dissidents in Iran, perhaps only a handful, who say the deal will actually help, will actually help dissidents within Iran. That is a total and complete and categorical falsehood. The deal will give the Iranian regime the power to repress even more, the power to repress within Iran, the power to export terrorism to Lebanon, the power to export terrorism to Syria in support of the terrorist leader Assad, the power to export terrorism to Yemen, the power to export terrorism to Iraq, but mostly the power to increase repression in Iran itself. That's only one thing that's wrong with the deal. The major thing that's wrong with the deal, and the deal was undemocratically enacted in the United States by a president who was in a minority. The Senate doesn't support the deal. The House doesn't support the deal. The American people don't support the deal. I don't believe the Iranian people support the deal. Certainly the people who have freedom to express themselves don't support the deal. But the president got the deal through by using a discredited maneuver called the filibuster, which prevented real debate and a real vote. Now, why did he do that? I think he did that because he realizes that what the United States is doing today amounts essentially to a crime. What is that crime? That crime, and you're all familiar with it, because we have all been accused of committing that crime, falsely, but that crime is providing material support to terrorism. And what does this deal do? It provides tens of billions, perhaps hundreds of billions of dollars of material support for terrorism. Of every dollar that the Iranians will get, much of it will go to repressing dissent within Iran, the rest of it will go to encouraging terrorism around the Middle East and ultimately around the world. That is why the President of the United States and the Secretary of Defense, and they're both my friends, 
I am not partisan here. I am a liberal Democrat who supported Obama twice, and yet I am strongly opposed to the deal from a liberal Democratic perspective. The president does not tell the truth when he says the only people who oppose this deal are warmongers. I love peace. I was opposed to the war in Iraq. I am a Democrat. I am a liberal. But I am a pragmatist. I understand evil. And I understand there is evil in this world. And I understand that the current Iranian regime is evil. It is evil. And you don't make deals with evil people that give them the financial ability and the material ability to increase the evil they're doing. That becomes complicity with evil. And we, the United States, to my regret, because I'm a patriotic American, I love this country. Like many of you, my grandparents came over from a different country. We are immigrants. We're all immigrants. And immigrants have made this country. And I have to tell you, the only good thing the only good thing that came out of the Iranian Revolution, only one good thing, and that is you coming to America. You have helped America. The Persian American community, the Persian Muslim American community, the Persian Jewish American community have contributed disproportionately to the greatness of this country. We thank you for coming to America. We thank you for your contributions to America. And remember one thing, you are first class citizens of America. You have the right to protest American policy. You are as patriotic as President Obama. You are as patriotic as Secretary of State Kerry. And your patriotism demands that you speak the truth to power. And when we hear protest what's going on in Iran, we are speaking the truth to power. I wrote a book against the Iran deal. It's called The Case Against the Iran Deal. How can we now stop Iran from getting nukes? That is our job. That is our mission. If you think Iran is bad today, and it is, it will only get worse if they obtain nuclear weapons. President Obama himself said, a nuclear-armed Iran would be a game-changer. He's wrong about one thing, this isn't a game. This is life and death. This is life and death for your relatives in Iran. This is life and death for your friends and relatives in Camp Liberty. What a terrible name for what should be called Camp Oppression, Camp Murder, Camp Destroying of Dissents. We have an obligation as Americans, and many of your speakers before you have emphasized that obligation. We owe it to the people of Camp Liberty. We are their protectors. We made a deal with them. We made a contract with them. And as a constitutional law teacher and practitioner, there is nothing more important in our Constitution than the obligation of government to keep its promises. We have failed the people of Camp Liberty. We have failed the dissidents of Iran. We have failed you. We have failed the people of the Middle East who will now be under a nuclear umbrella if this deal is carried out the way we all suspect it will be carried out. Why, I ask you, does Iran need 24 days before inspections are permitted of new facilities? If you're innocent, you don't need 24 days. If you're trying to hide nuclear development, you need 24 days. This is a government of cheaters, a government of liars, a government of deceivers, a government of oppressors, a government of tyrants. And we will not rest until there is a change of regime, until the people of Iran by a fair and open vote, are allowed to elect their leaders. And believe me, and you know this, the person who would come in last in any free and open in election are the current leaders of Iran. And I think we know who would come in first. So we're here, we're here to promote democracy. We're here in the spirit of Dog Hammarskjöld to promote human rights. We turn our back to those in the United Nations who support tyranny, and we turn our face to you 
who support liberty, freedom, and democracy. May you go from strength to strength. Thank you.